everybody. Welcome to Thursday meeting. Thank you very much for your patience. There are some problems with uh, uh, John's computer, so I'll be starting while John is connecting. And I want to thank you again and uh, introduce the um, the painter that we, our guest for tomorrow is Fosia Shazam, that is from, um, uh, Bangladesh. from Bangladesh. Bangladesh, yes, from Bangladesh. And she has got her um, dot card that uh, John will wanted to do the swatches. But in this case, Giovanni Balzarani is going to help us. He's going to start with the swatches. So we will watch, we will see and watch the way he does the swatches for Fosia's colors. And uh, again, if anyone would like to ask any questions, that you are very welcome to do so, either in Facebook, uh, in text, or if you are in Zoom, you can just unmute your uh, microphones and start asking the questions if you have any, or if not, just watch how uh, Giovanni will do the wonderful swatches. So if you're ready, Giovanni. Okay. I cannot see you. I, but I am ready. I'm ready. Yes. I'm okay. Ready. Fabulous. Can you tell us uh, each color and uh, which one okay. it is? Yeah. And maybe show us Posias. Do you have Posias? No, you don't have Posias.car, right? We're sharing uh, uh, via chat. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm, I'm starting for the, the, the real sequence of dot card Fosia, starting with the, with the Primatec Bloodstone Genuine. I guess Bloodstone, that. yes. But, uh, yeah. That I, is one of the Primatecs, isn't it? Yeah, this is the Primatec. I used during mm -hmm. the, this live uh, the um, half pen and the uh, watercolor sticks. Mm -hmm. The bloodstone is a beautiful color. I believe it is granulating, isn't it? Yeah. It's a beautiful red of gray, red gray. Mm -hmm. Granulating and transparent. Granulating and transparent. Wonderful. Series two. Series two. Okay, the second Burn tiger. Burn tiger eye. Burn tiger's eye, yes. Eye, yes, is Primatec. Another Primatec. Yeah. Uh, just to remind you gently that Primatec colors are the ones that are made with Primatec means primitive technology. So they are colors made from minerals. So yeah. they grind the minerals. And then they the grind the minerals and they uh, mix them then with the, the gamma arabic and then they get these beautiful natural colors. I have, prima I have the beautiful granulation. Uh-huh. Yeah. The, the zoom, a little zoom. Thank the, you, thank the, you, the, yes. The granulation. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful color. The third color, I yet use the, the sticks, the watercolor sticks, the cobalt blue. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful blue. Yes, very intense. Very it's cobalt, intense. yes. Semi transparent. Semi, okay. Mm -hmm. What about the burnt tiger's eye? Was it transparent? Transparent. Transparent. They are transparent. Uh -huh. the, the sticks with on the wet on wet and the replay with the brush. Yes, the sticks are also very intense. Very intense because they have a few parts of gamma arabic. It's very intensive color. Yes, just to remind you that the sticks have exactly the same pigment as the tubes and, um, and the pans, uh, just more, less water. Because if they have just the pigment and gamma arabic, that's the same thing. 
as the tubes. Just it, they have dried more, so they have less water. Yeah. The fur color is deep sub green. Deep sub green, yes. Is a very dark green, is a beautiful. Transparent mm -hmm. and non granulating. Okay. Transparent and non granulating. What series is it? Deep sub green. Very beautiful. Again, Again Primatech hematite genuine. No, era hematite valid. Eh, hematite valid. Um, sorry. Sorry, can you repeat, please? Hematite? Violet. A violet, yes. That's another Primatech. Yes. Do no. you know there's a question from Facebook from Loretta? What's the paper that you are using today? I use the Fabriano Artistico. One hundred percent cold, cold pressed, green thing, extra white. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. And thank you, Mark, for writing all the colors in the chat. Yeah. Hey, that violet. You asked a moment ago what series deep sea green, deep sap green was, and it's series two. Oh, thank you. But uh, you remember that the series is, um, depending on the series, the price is different. Here is all the colors of series one have a price, then series two have next price and so on. From one to five. From yeah. one to five. This hematite violet, they have a beautiful, beautiful granulation because and yeah. semi transparent. And the semi transparent. So, so far we've had, oh, this is wonderful, this granulation. So far, uh, the cobalt is um, semi transparent and the hematite violet is also semi transparent, right? Okay. The next, you. Again, the uh, watercolor scheme, my favorite, lunar black. Ah, oh, yes, lunar black. The, the color, the real black. I think it's maybe the most granulating of all colors, probably. I, I'm not sure, but it's incredibly granulating. Very intensive and they have the, the beautiful shades. Uh, Letizia, is this transparent or semi transparent? Uh, transparent, granulating mm -hmm. and transparent. Mm -hmm. Series one. Series one. Series one. The next. Dark blue. My dark blue. May and dark blue. Non granulating color, semi transparent series three. Mm -hmm. Non granulating, transparent, and series three. Very, very dark blue. I think. Uh, if I'm not wrong, that Mayan colors are done, or at least Mayan blue is done in the Mayan style, the way they uh, made the color, the Mayans. Yes. Yeah. Then we have the Monte Amiata Natural Siena. Monte Amiata Natural Siena. Is Monte a Amiata, yes. The granulating color transparent series one. Yeah. In the granulating, you said? Yeah. 
granulating transparent series one. So series one would be the cheapest series, is that right? And uh, series five would be the most expensive. It's a beautiful yellow, wow. Yeah, this is it's a particular yellow because I have a um, similar to yellow hawk, but it's more intense. Very intense, yes. Can you repeat that? You said it's similar to which color? Um, yellow ochre. Similar to yellow ochre, but more it's intense. Brown. This is the um, pigment the, brown. In the range pigment of brown. brown seven. Is this a primitive? Let me no, check. No, it's not, not primitive. Look at the granulation of the hematite violet. This is the pigment brown seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the granulation of hematite violet. Mm -hmm. Under the brown shade. Brown shade. The brown shade. Beautiful. Next is a glow. Is a uh, glow watercolor stick. I like um, it. One of my favorites too. Yours as well, Giovanni? Yeah. I'm sure that some people uh, in the audience also like the moon glow. I use me the brush. This is granulating, Letizia? Uh, yes. Yeah. And transparent. Mm -hmm. Very, very beautiful color. Remember that uh, Moon Glow is made out of three colors. Yeah, uh, help help me with that. It's um, viridian green, right? The um, the map, um, uh, what is the red? Ultramarine, yes. Anthraquinoid red. Ah, yes, anthraquinoid red. Yes. So sometimes it separates. It divides into these three colors. Yeah. While it's drying, it can you can see shades of red or pink and shades of blue so beautiful a little zoom mm -hmm. <laughs> yes we can start to see the pink or the the red there yeah the next is my is the favorite color of the, the all the artists for the um, is important color and the, for the fausia is, is a very very important color is neutral tint because ah. it's the base of the painting the base neutral the tint yeah neutral tint is not granulating semi mm -hmm. transparent series one so semi transparent non granulating Series one. Yeah. Neutral tint is important because, for example, for the um, undertone, <clears throat> for the shade, it's beautiful for this. But also, uh, I believe that neutral tint is very good for combining with other with other colors. Yeah. You can mix it with, uh, I don't know, with burnt sienna, uh, with yes. other colors. And for the, um, the change the, the value and then the, um, for the, the shade, is important for the shade. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is made by the pigment black six, pigment violet 19 and pigment blue 15. So there are three yes. colors. Yeah. Three colors there, yes. I remember the, the words of John and the neutral tint is, uh, 
in the field or already or on watercolor sticks? Okay. It's going to be, yes, soon uh, will be available in watercolor sticks. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Uh, another color in the watercolor stick is New Cambodge. Yes. Long granulating, transparent, serious one. Mm -hmm. Long granulating, transparent, serious one. A beautiful yellow. Mm -hmm. It's lighter than the other one, than the Monte Amiata. Uh, yeah, yeah. Monte Amiata is a, is a brown. Oh, it's a brown, it's a type of brown, but it looks yellow, at least in the screen. No? Yeah, maybe the, the light. Mm -hmm. Oh. We've got some comments from uh, Facebook, Angela. This is from Diane. The Diane yes. is enjoying our sticks. She said, I love the sticks. They are so travel friendly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You, you couldn't. Yes, it's absolutely right. You put them in the, in the, in the plastic holder so they will stay the same. Yes, exactly. It's wonderful to travel with them. And they go such a long way. Also, if you, you can cut them, you can take only a piece and then carry uh, quite a few in, in one, just in one holder or in, a, in, a, in, in one of the, you, you can just use a piece of it. Yeah, it's very, very comfortable for the, the traveling, for the plein air. Mm -hmm. Very easy to use. Change water. Quinacridon red is the next one. The next is Quinacridon red. Quinacridon red, yes. Very no granulating and transparent. Series two. Series two. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, Angela, I think we have um, yes. Yeah, Valerie from Facebook uh, message. She's interested to hear others, um, others' favorite neutral tint mixes. So maybe later um, with yes. Gab, Anna, and Johnny, and, and Gio, we can explore your mixes with neutral tint. That sounds fantastic. It's a very, very good idea because I know that some painters use it a lot to mix with others just to, to make um, darker values. And it just with different shades, it has, uh, depending on the color you mix it with, it, it, uh, it has different shades. So we can explore that later. Thank you, Diane, because it's a beautiful idea. The next color is um, another Primatec, is a Rhodonite, genuine. Rhodonite, yeah, I love that. This is the only red. Mm -hmm. cred. Only. Non granulating, transparent. Lovely. It's a little bit, it turns a little bit too pink. It's yes, exactly. Red. It's a little bit pink. You mean it's the only red in the Primatex? Yeah. That's what you mean, right? Yes. Yes. Do you not consider garnet in the Primatex series to be red? Um, is it considered red, the, the garment? What shade has it got? Garnet. Can you explain, Leticia? Do you have the, uh, do you have the, 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 do you have the leaflet? Yes. It may be in the PV range. Explain the garment. Mm. But you haven't got it here, right? Because it's not part of uh, Forzia's um, dot card. Yeah. Another color is um, sepia. But we, we can explore later. Yes, yeah, sepia. Yeah. Mm 
Is this transparent? Yeah. It's also very good for mixing. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. beautiful for the, the range of brown, mixing or, or, or mixing with yellow. This is the garnet. The garnet, explain. This is the difference with the um, the garnet. It's more brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is rhodonite. Rhodonite. Ah, how beautiful. You know what I'm thinking? That if you mix both of them. That would make a wonderful mix if you make them touch. Yeah. They go so well together. Does the rhodonite have sparkle? No. No, no. It's not sparkle. And let me see movement. Okay. This is right. yeah. and, uh, and garnet. On garnet. top is garnet, and on the bottom is rhodonite. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're Not welcome. The, another color, and another primate color, and water color sticks is serpent. Yes. Serpentine, yes. Yeah. If I'm, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> excuse yeah. me, serpentine is the one that is uh, from Australia, right? Yeah, 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 correct. It's a beautiful green. Is is a rich green. Mm hmm. Little shade of yellow. Is this um, granulating and transparent, Letitia? Uh, serpentine is granulating, semi-transparent. Semi -transparent. Okay, thank you. Angela, we have two, a few more comments from Facebook. Um, yeah. Caroline from Australia says, neutral tint with kin gold makes a very beautiful olive green. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. We yeah. must try that. <laughs> mm. Yes. And Raffaele uh, said sepia is very good for glazing dark shadows. Wow. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you, Raffaele. And thank you, Caroline. Another primatic color is um, for the watercolor sticks is soda light. Uh -huh. I'd love this one. Yeah. It's a blue shade. Mm -hmm. Have a blue shade. So the light is granulating, semi transparent, mm -hmm. series four. Four, but, wow. But when it thick, in thick, it, it becomes series one. Exactly. All the sticks are the price for all the sticks is series one, even though they are uh, the series four or three. Sticks mm -hmm. always have the same. Uh, belong to the same series, so they have always the same price. So the light seems like a blue jeans. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, a little blue. Uh, no, we cannot see. Can we see? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes. This moment I change the, the sheets. Uh -huh. So in Fosia's um, dot card, there are a lot of granulating colors. Yeah, in more colors, Primatex, yeah. Exactly. And many of the Primatex have the mineral, have mica or another mineral that makes them granulating. Another color is a Suji light. 
mm -hmm. Primatech. Another Primatech, exactly. Yeah. John Cogley is in. Yeah. John. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And so <laughs> lights as, uh, as sparkles. Sparkles. Oh, yes, true. This is mm -hmm. Granulating Transparent Series 3. Uh huh. Okay. Granulating trans semi transparent or transparent? Transparent, transparent. right? Transparent. Transparent. Yeah. Series 3. With a beautiful sparkle color. Zoom. Hi, John. Uh, yay! Hi! Hi, Hello, John. John. Thank you so Hi, much for, for taking on, showing everybody the colors, Anna. Yeah. Johnny, Gabriel, Giovanni. Boy, I love these computers when they're doing well, but... <laughs> I know, are, I know. They, they are, are nightmares sometimes. <laughs> they are in control. Awesome. Yeah. I continue. <laughs> Oh yeah, please continue. Oh, oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> the last three colors. The last three colors of the yeah, yeah. Of the card. The yeah. another color is transparent pure orange. Uh-huh. Transparent pure orange. Non-granulating. Transparent. Series. Transparent. Two. Series two. Series two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the beautiful intense. Orange. Beautiful mix. Yes. The last two are Primatex. The red fuchsite, genuine. Red fuchsite. Fuchsite. Sorry for my pronouns. <laughs> I don't know if it, if it is the correct pronunciation. Fushite. 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 Is it the stone? This is the stone? Yeah. yeah. So it glimmers yeah. because it's full of mica. Oh. So, John, do you want to continue? Um, no, go ahead and finish off the colors, and then we'll do some other stuff. Okay. Okay. The last color is a, another prima like it's zoocyte. It's correct. Zoocyte. Uh, zoocyte. Zoocyte. Okay. Zoocyte. Oh, zoocyte. Zoocyte. I don't know who. Zoocyte. That's good, I don't know yeah. who, who who chose this these names really. It's a, zoocyte is a mineral. So, a mineral. Yeah, from South America. Oh, it's really sad. Really sad. It's a semi transparent. Series four. Mm -hmm. It's a dark green. It's a beautiful dark green. It's a beautiful dark green, yes. And John, there is a request to do some mixes. Uh, what mixes uh, can be made with the neutral tint? So that's that's one of the requests we had on Facebook. Okay, Excellent. I'm ready for the mixing. Gabriel, what are you doing? Looks like green appetite. Thanks for asking, John. Um, what I have here is, um, right here is Serpentine. Serpentine. Um, that's one of her colors. Yes. And uh, we have Neutral Tint with the Serpentine here. And then over here we have Serpentine. And I've never tried it with New Gombach. So uh, that's what I got going there. And then I have a few other mixes that I've done uh just uh playing with her palette which is amazing um just there's some more here uh this was a uh, cobalt blue with a neutral tint over here and then this is cobalt blue 
with um I'll have to remember. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You also have Anna Anna Marie. Yeah, I was gonna ask Anna next. So Anna, what is yours? You're just doing the colors in a in a vertical way. Working with gravity also. So we have the colors that we've been working through with our uh, artists. Uh, palette, and then I've been adding the lunar black stick on top here, here, and letting them mix, seeing how we can get granulation and transparency playing back and forth. Very cool. Very cool. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. And Johnny, how about you? Yeah. Hello. Uh, well, I have the neutral tint with quinacrid and gold, and, and it creates a beautiful uh, olive green like Carolyn said and uh, um, i have the neutral tint with sleeping beauty and lavender gorgeous gorgeous mixes very nice yeah absolutely it's got to be the most unique dot card of it we've had so far i'm really looking forward to tomorrow yeah it's interesting so i think what you'll see tomorrow when i um did in the artist studio with uh, Faja last year, because um, you ask about this sometimes, she will have every color she's going to use on the back of her paintings, every color she's used, and then she'll do a color study of all the colors and how they mix together. It's just, it's amazing. I remembered what this color was. This color uh, here was tiger's eye, with cobalt blue, burnt um, tiger's eye. Beautiful. Who's that, Johnny? Well, I have an example for uh, soda light. I used it for the hair. Mm. Very nice. Soda light and some sleeping beauty. Mm -hmm. awesome. So the light is very granulating, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So Barbara, I had a crash in my system. I was going to ask you about Antarctica. John, thank you. It was so uh, wonderful. It was it's more surreal than you can imagine. It's been on my bucket list forever. Yeah, mine too. And um, you know, just the colors were always changing and I was trying to paint in the in the room and I brought, of course, lots of materials, but of course you don't have, I didn't have everything I needed <laughs> and everything dried very fast. So, you know, the room had a white leather couch in it and it was kind of, I didn't mess it up. <laughs> came close. Next but week, can, you, say, can you show us some? Uh, you know, I put them, I sent them to you guys. They're on Instagram. I, I don't have them with me here. I'm out in East Hampton. Maybe next week. Um, uh, I used, I used the, um, you know, I did, I, I did many paintings and many of them were, you know, overdone and stuff, but the ones I liked, I posted the most and, and um, I used those, the, the little set of blues, half pans. I used all of those. I used almost the entire lunar blue. I used a lot of lunar black. Um, I used uh, some of the inspiration set. Couldn't use everything because, you know, there's not a lot of green. I mean, we saw a little bit of a few lichens and algae, but not enough to paint. But wow. it was really wonderful. It was a Viking cruise. It was Really wonderful. <laughs> I can't, awesome. I can't, you know, it was so thrilling to be there. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. It's on my so, list. May, okay. may I add an art detail with exploring the extremities of the planet? Of when, when Shackleton was off exploring and doing his adventures, uh, he brought along an artist, a painter, which many of us, I, I'm sure, know. Uh, and when they were trying to escape the island that they couldn't get off of and they were trying to get back to civilization the they actually used the oil paints and candle wicks to caulk the boat to get off the island and just as an artist that's a fun detail they, they used oil paints to make yeah. it 
That's awesome. The creative there's book, spirit. There's a book by Caroline Alexander that has all the original photographs in it. Wow. And we saw them at uh, Museum of uh, Natural History, uh, I guess gotta be 25 years ago, but they were just stunning. And they had the little, the little dory, the James cared there. And the, the, you had to look through the sextant to see what they were doing, you know, to get the sense of, of the moving of the boat when they went the, on the, the uh, I guess it was a 900 mile trip to South Georgia. I'm still reading Antarctica books, John. <laughs> There's so many of them. That's too cool. Yeah, it's definitely on my list. Trip of a lifetime. So Giovanni, is that the, so you, you finished off of uh, Faja's Colors. Yeah. You and Anna and Johnny and Gabriel. Awesome. Um, okay. I had some other questions that were asked. I wanted to, thank you very much for that, by the way. I wanted to show you. One of them was on quinethalum. I was asked about quinethalum. Put this down here so you can see. And the difference between quinethalone and um, quinacridone. And from a real easy standpoint, the quins, as we've always talked about, are five is a five ring structure with alpha and beta particles. And the quinethalone, which is very beautiful, um, but not a quinacridone, is a four ring double bonded structure. So, you know, I, I always, people ask me about chemistry or the physics. As artists, you have all of those. You're using those all the time. And what I really try to get across is there's no reason to be afraid of something, which is actually so beautiful. You know, you can look at it this way, or you can look at the color that it creates and the color it creates is gorgeous. So especially for, for younger people, there's just no reason to ever be afraid about physics or chemistry or art. They all go hand in hand with each other. You know, they, they create great beauty. Um, John, may I ask a question? Yes. yes. Um, quinethalone, is that the source that we get quinacridones from or do we have other pigments from that line, from that family? So quinethalone, we only have, there are other pigments within that molecule, but it's, it's not a quinacridone. So quinacridone is that five ring. Um, so quinacridone is always easy to see because it's a, it's a five ring structure and the quinethalone is four rings. So they're, they're quite different. They're just not the same. The quinethalone is in a different family than the quinacridones. Do we have any pigments in the quinethalone family? Only the quinethalone yellow. Yellow, thank you. Yep. yep, it's that beautiful, vibrant yellow. Yep. Another question, I know most of you know this because you've been online with me for so long, but there was a question about the series and this right here is the series. For Prussian blue, it's a series one. And for cerulean blue, it's a series three. And what a series means, it's how we propose kind of the price structure. So what we do is we try to put everything possible into ones and twos. And we can do that because we're a manufacturer, um, but there's things that we can't do that with. There's, there are very, very, very expensive pigments as well. And those would be the ones that are in the higher series. Um, and, and really there's no way around that. I can make bigger batches and, and we're very good about what we do, um, but they're just expensive to begin with. So that, that's, that's what the series means. But you'll note that the majority of the series are either ones or twos. This doesn't hold true in the sticks. The sticks have series one, two, three in them, and they're all the same price, and they're actually less than a series one tube of paint, which is, you know, kind of defies logic because they actually take more pigment to make them. Um, but it's just something I thought that was important to get into the hands of the artist. So that was a great question. 
I did want to play a game with you. I went and I just picked a handful of tubes. I thought what we would do is paint them out and guess what they are. So I think what I'd like to do is if you'd be open and I'm gonna show you the color because I know you have the color chart with you. So you can look up kind of the, um, the properties. So I'm not gonna look, I'm gonna show it, I'm gonna show it to you. So go away from the screen. So that's the color. If you looked at the screen, then you're gonna know what the color is. So the next one, I'll probably be, try to be better at that. <laughs> ah, okay, I'll try to get better at that. So you can make believe you didn't see it. And would you like me to talk about what the characteristics are while you paint it out? Well, I think that actually be pretty neat. Yes, please. So the pigment that he's working with right now is available both in uh, 15 milliliters, five milliliters and the stick. It is a series one and it's transparent. It is not granulating. Transparent. And the pigment index number is Roman numeral four or in R, which I understand to mean natural red. No, pigment uh, red 83. It means, not, it means not rated. Not rated, thank you. Yep. So that means it's... Uh, it means that sometimes the manufacturer doesn't submit it to um, the naming convention which is always, you know, they can do that or not do that. So if they don't, then it's not rated. If they not did, rated. it would say, you know, what family it's in, what, what index it is, et cetera. So they always make that, that choice. And it's pigment red 83. So pigment red 83. Anybody have any ideas? Index, it is well, I crimson. crimson. That, that you showed it. It was Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. You I showed it. it. <laughs> I tried not to show it. <laughs> we cheated. it. Sorry, John. <laughs> no, no, you're good at that. Okay, so that it is. It's Elizabeth Crimson. So as Anna was saying, there's also the permanent version of this, which is made from very high light fast colors. Elizabeth Crimson itself is a coal tar derivative. And it was used by the masters. So um, we make it available. A lot of professors have their students use it. They know the quality of it. They know that it's it has a fugitive nature, which is you know 20 plus years in full sunlight. Um, but they use it because the masters used it. But if you wanted to use it as an artist, you could always use the permanent version. Okay, go so on. here's the next one. All right. Yes, Ian, go ahead. Um, when you're talking about transparency and rating it is that done by uh, some sort of spectral analysis or do you rate that so, by eye? so so two things um the whether it's a series one two three or four is done by a light fastness so everything starts with the pigment to begin with and it's really what the manufacturer wants to accomplish that starts the process. You know, they can make the pigment in any way they want. Because most of these are, are, are going to industry, they really want high light fastness because a lot of these are gonna be for cars. So they're gonna be, you know, ones on steroids. Um, so then we take it to the next level, which is how do you know what they are? And that's done through, um, it starts with a photospectrophotometer because you have to have a basis, right? So you present it to a photospectrophotometer and it says, what's being bounced back to you in terms of light. Then you go to, and you put it to a xenon fadeometer and the xenon fadeometer over 300 to 400 hours, depends on what the standards being used. Um, it, will, it will push the light onto the pigment. And then when you're done that, you push it back to the photospectrophotometer 
and you see now what is the amount of light coming back. And you take what it started with to where it ended with, and then there is a table you look up and it will give you what the light fastness is. There's a lot more steps in that, but in general, that's how it's done. So it, 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 um, with regards to how um, transparent the paint is. So transparency has nothing to do with light fastness. No. Transparency is another variable, right? You have staining as a variable, you have light fastness as a variable, you have opacity as a variable, and you have granulation as a variable. And those are the four variables that we report for each pigment that's used. So, so how, how do you rate it? Is, is that done through spectral analysis? No, the, light, the, the, the transparency is actually set by the manufacturer. Right. So they're having a customer that they're coming, a customer is coming to them and saying, this is what I want, for example. And when they create that particular pigment, they're deciding whether they want it to be opaque, whether they want it to be semi-transparent, or whether they want it to be transparent. It's all done from the chemistry. Yeah. Um, Good question. Yeah, good is question. that true for all pigments, or do we have some pigments that naturally have one characteristic or another? Uh, I'm thinking such as our uh, Prim Primatech and our Pigment Red 101, our Pigment Brown 7, et cetera. So when you're talking about the, your, when you're talking about the Primatech, you're absolutely right. That's gonna, that is all going to matter upon the mineral itself. Absolutely, because that's that's a natural thing. Some 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 siennas are natural, some ochres are natural, but there's also the synthetic side. And usually when it's a synthetic, that which is being created in the laboratory, it's being done for a specific purpose. Because the cost of creating a pigment is so high, it's being done from industry because somebody wants it. And usually it's the person that wants it that is saying what and how it should behave. All good questions. I love those questions. Okay, so here's the next one. I'm going to show you if you want to know, you're going to look Sean. at this. You don't want to know, just look to the screen for just a second. Okay, here's the next one. You're off screen, they can't see it. Now? Oh, come on, focus, baby. Blue, blue, blue. How about now? It's a blue. Okay. <laughs> how, how about how about this how about this one red bill <laughs> got yes. it okay. Okay. so someone was asking a question and i didn't hear what your question is can you repeat it again so I... yes john i had a question can you hear me yes. now yes absolutely can you tell us a little bit about anthraquinoid red anthraquinoid red yep. yes it's a pretty color like what is the science makeup of that versus a quin? So if you want to if you want to see the molecular structure, I can put that together and show you next week. I'll be glad to do that. Thank you. You've got it. So anthraquinoid red is also used in what 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 are the probably one of the most popular colors. What do you where else do you think anthraquinoid red? Moon glow. Monglo, <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Which one of them uses pyro orange? Shadow violet. Shadow, Shadow violet. violet. Yeah. There you go. Shadow and, violet. and it gets the prize. Okay. Okay. So Anna's going to tell you about this color. You can kind of see that it's either semi-transparent or transparent. It's semi-transparent. And it's only available in 15 um, no. milliliters. No, thank you. It's rated number two, which is light fastness very good over 100 years. It is granulating and it is medium staining. And it's uh, pigment index number is one pigment red 149. Okay. Anybody have an idea? Well, we saw it again. Someone says organic vermilion. <clears throat> That's from Facebook. 
That's a good guess. Yeah, from Diane. Fairly Scarlet. Who said that? Giovanni. That you money? Yeah, Giovanni. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's right. Is he right, Anna? Yes, Pyro Scarlet? Right. Was it yeah. Pyro Red or not? It's Pyro Scarlet. Scarlet, yeah. Pyro and uh, Scarlet. actually, Anna was talking about uh, Berylin Scarlet from the chart, but it's Pyro Scarlet. Donnie thinks I made a mistake. No right. worries. Hey, I do it too. So, so, so Johnny's saying uh, that it was pyro scarlet, which is pigment red, two fifty five, and it has better light fastness, but not granulating. Thanks, Johnny. You're welcome. Okay, this one. This way, Anna can play too. I probably should put it upside down so you don't see. This one is going to grind it really well. So you can see it's our favorite. Right. <laughs> so it granulates really well. If I put a magnet underneath it, I could probably move those particles. Hematite. <laughs> Whoever said hematite is correct. It's a hematite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. hematite. Does lunar black also respond to the magnet? Absolutely. Yep. So uh, lunar black is Mars black. Yeah. Okay, this one. So I call these colors the life of the party. They want to let everybody at the party know they've arrived. <laughs> Does bloodstone. So what, what, fam what family do you think it's in? Taylor Ultramarine. Taylor Blue. 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 It's Taylor Blue. You're all correct. And it's green, green shade, shade or red shade? Red shade. This is green shade. Red. Oh, green shade. Green shade. Oh, it's a little hard to see it here on the monitor. So you guys all got 100%. It's phthalo green or phthalo blue. Phthalo blue. Green shade. Phthalo blue, green shade. In my, in my monitor, is red shade. Yeah. John? Yes. Change your monitor. Change your monitor. Is yes. bloodstone genuine magnetic? Bloodstone genuine, you know, it should be magnetic because bloodstone um is because it looks like heme hemoglobin uh it's an iron derivative um it, so what all those are nice questions what i'll do next week is Ooh. i will bring all the colors that are magnetic and we'll play with them in really heavy washes and move them around how's that yes that's great yes please fabulous sorry to put you on blast you in different Nice I love those what do you think about? Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Would it make any difference if you made diff add different strengths of a uh, magnet as to what pattern would occur? You know, it's it's gonna make more of a difference how concentrated your wash is, right? The more water you add, the more you're gonna push the particles. Um, you know, away, um, but you'd still see it. You'd still see it if you played underneath it. The thinner the paper, of course, would be better. Um, but if you just want to play around, we'll play around. I have a, uh, it's a special magnet. I mean, it's good enough to blow up this equipment anyway. So we'll play with this and we'll, we'll bring it around. These actually, the ones that are a little bit bigger than this, you give to cows to swallow, right? You, you feed them to cows. And it picks up any type of metal they've eaten. And that's how you can get out of the cows. So kind of interesting little backstory. What? John. So John, this one right uh, here, you can guess on this John, one. <laughs> yes. Diane is asking if, uh, if kyanite is one of these magnetic colors. No, kyanite is not. Okay. No. Kyanite's not. Okay. Kyanite's not. Jadeite wouldn't be. Sodalite wouldn't be. It'd be anything with an Fe 
which is iron, FE is iron, anything that contains, for the most part, um, a high degree of iron. So hematite, okay. you know, it is just, it's loaded. It's loaded. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll Thank bring those you. out. You're yeah, very welcome. We can play with those next week. I was also asked, oh, and we'll do this next week. Is this hematite? Giro, you should put a little bit more water, I think. Yeah. Okay. So that one you've seen. Okay, we'll try this one. And the famous words of Angela Barbie lots of water. Lots of water. My words. <laughs> Okay, this one. When I so yeah. we talk about well, this is watercolor. We're not just working with pigments. This is first about water. So I don't know if you can see that. This one is a, is a favorite among. Queen magenta. What, what was that? I roll crimson. Queen magenta. Opera pink. No, it's not opera pink. pink. Queen rose. rose. Queen Rose, I think. It's like Queen Rose. Rose. It is Queen Rose. Yeah. God, you're good. I think we are very good in this. Yes. <laughs> John. Okay. We'll do um, one more. Yes. John, yes. Diane, uh, who asked about the kyanite, she yes. mentioned that it, it does have sparkles. It does. And the sparkles are actually from the crystal itself. Here, I will, well, I'll put this one out and I will go grab a piece of it real quick because I have it on my desk over here. Okay, thank you. For sure I do. Besnik, how do you use uh, that last color? Gabriel, you mean about Queen Rose, right? Yes. Always um, by mixing some, not very often I use it as a pure color. Anyway, I love this queen rose. All of the queens are just amazing. Mm -hmm. They're really, they're really cool. Yeah, so nice. this one right here, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a high, it's highly granulating. Lunar violet? Sure looks like <laughs> me. It okay. seems to me lunar violet. It's, it so it's, it's lunar highly violet. granulating. But it has a warm, it has a warmth to it. It's a warm color. It's made up of three pigments. Oh, lunar violet or moon glow. Moon? It's moon glow. Moon glow. Who said moon glow? Uh, Johnny. Dan. <laughs> you know, I, I would have, I would have said lunar violet certainly is a good guess because of the screen. And lunar violet would make sense because it has that granulation, but it's actually moon glow. So yep, then it's one of my favorites. Me this too. Is, this is kyanite right here. Where does it come from, John? Wow, um, kyanite from South know. America. South America. Beautiful. And you can see it's, it's these long, these are like wafer crystals to it. And it's the crystals itself that are giving it that, that shininess. There is no metal in this one. No, no metal on this one. Well, let me let me let me recorrect that. There is no iron in this one. Mm -hmm. mm, beautiful. Yep. So you can see the crystals go. They go all different ways. They go this way. They go this way. So what we try to do is cleave this, break it apart, you know, into microscopic, less than forty microns, but still be a crystal. So it would. Um, just like a, uh, a diamond or a, a crystal of salt, it's going to act as a prism. So it's going to give that, that reflective quality. But that right there is kind of nice. It's a really pretty. Barbara crystal. says it looks like an iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The yeah, color, there are a lot of icebergs that color. <laughs> but that was just, the, you know, the light. Mostly they were white and black. We talk about this one a lot. This is actually, um, do you know what this is? Any guesses? This? This is hematite. Hematite. And you can see wow. that hematite is a series of crystals. You can see just the, the hundreds of crystals. 
So it's, it looks is, greenish, John. I guessed right. I was on mute. Maybe do it this way. Beautiful. It does on the screen. It does look greenish, but it's not. But it does absolutely look, I'm looking at the screen and I can see that too. But it's just a series of crystals. You can see kind of the oxidation, kind of, kind of see the oxidation there. How it's yeah. kind of resting. So it's oxidizing, going from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. There we go. Does the hematite violet come from a different place than the hematite? So the different hematites come from different locations. Right. Um, the interesting thing is like we've, we look at or talk about turquoise, the two mines. So Sleeping Beauty turquoise is from the Sleeping Beauty mine. And then the, um, Kingman turquoise. Kingman turquoise is from another mine. And they're not, that, they're not that far away from each other. So in a mine, the interesting thing when we look at mines is you can have material that is on the surface. You can have material that's in a pit or you can have material that is in a mine. And they can all look different. It's because it's the, the mineral takes on some of the material that surrounds them. And that's what gives them their you know, unique colors, et cetera. So you can get Kingman of different shades or Sleeping Beauty of different shades, depending on how deep you go, right? So it's, it's how deep. Um, also laterally. So there's a lot of steps in making sure it, it's, it always comes out the same. Um, uh, it's, it's how we have to process it within the manufacturing facility. So to answer your question, Barbara, um, those come from different places, but sometimes they can come and they can actually be quite either quite close or they can be on different continents. Okay. So green appetite is found in um, British Columbia, but you can also find it in South America, right? I mean, there's there's just different places in different uh, in different quantities. And the blue comes from the same place or different mines? Comes from a different place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right. yes. So, uh, you know, we were talking about microns. In yes. sizes of yes. uh, of pigment. Yes. What what would you consider to be coarse ground pigment in comparison to fine ground pigment, micron wise? So, um, so in in general, if we look at the width of this piece of paper, that's about a hundred microns. Mm -hmm. The width of the paper. So what we're looking at is for the Primatex, for example, we process and cleave those to where they are, I had that right, where they are less than 40 microns. So where they're less than, less, less than 40 microns, uh, less than half the size of a human hair. If we looked at the, um, say the coarse, uh, PB29, which is French ultramarine blue, or the PB29, which is the ultramarine blue. French ultramarine blue, larger, might be about, say it's, uh, say it's 12 microns, and the ultramarine blue might be uh, seven to eight microns. So in, in that situation, coarse is 12 microns. 12 microns, I mean, look at a piece of paper, you can kind of see that is small. I mean, so mm -hmm. even coarse, um, we want to, the reason that we say for the Primatex have to be less than 40 microns, when something's larger than 40 microns, especially you as artists, you might be able to perceive the particle. We don't want the particle perceived by the human eye. So we want less than 40, right? You start getting bigger than that. There's a possibility you can see the see the particles, and we don't really want you to. We don't. 
we don't want the particles to be seen, not because we want to hide the particles, it's because of how it's going to reflect and refract light. Again, everything that we, you do about art is about light. And, you know, it's, 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 it's getting that color and saturation back to the eye. Is there a technical limitation that once it starts getting larger than 40 microns, the gum Arabic does not bind it well to the paper? Nope. It's actually just the opposite. There's actually, um, there's actually more of an issue getting it too small. Because you can actually change, for example, if you really worked on PB29 with our mills, because our mills, they're computer controlled, we could change PB29 to same PB29, but we can change it from French ultramarine to ultramarine. So you really have to pay special attention of how your mills are set, et cetera. There's always an issue that you can shift a color by making it less than what it was to begin with. Um, so more of an issue making it smaller versus larger. As weird as that sounds. So hypothetically in the future, could there be a, a, a niche market for pigments that are ground very coarsely so that we can see the individual particles suspended in the water bound to the page? So, yeah, I don't know. If you wanted to, if you wanted to see, we, we've all seen them. Um, if you've been to a museum, you looked at the master's works, I'm gonna flip this up. Um, if you've been to the museums and you looked at, looked at the work of the, of the masters, which I'm, all of you have, if you really look around that painting, you could see hot spots and cold spots. And the reason you could see hot spots and cold spots or hot areas and, and cool areas is because when they ground that with human muscles, they couldn't have the particles be uniform. You know, when we're using particles and we say they're 33 microns, they're 33 microns across the board, right? Because that's how they're made. But when you have differentials, you can actually have different ones, you know, it's, it's going to be how they reflect that light. And because now it's different how they reflect it, you will get hot spots and cold spots. And that's what most, most artists don't want. They want uniformity. Um, so you can get that now. I mean, you can get, you can, you, you could actually grind it yourself and, and you would have that. John. That was a good question, by the way. Yes. Um, today I was watching a, a, a video of an oil painter and he was talking about using ultramarine blue, but he was talking in, in the sense of uh, natural ultramarine blue and synthetic ultramarine blue. Is that something you ever come across? Absolutely. And uh, so have you. It's uh, lapis is the first true ultramarine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, he, sh he should have said that real and I would have got it. Yeah. So he's absolutely right that, you know, that the natural is the, is the lapis. It was the first and then the French ultramarine and the ultramarine were made specifically to be synthetic versions of the ultra of the uh, the lapis, and that's because lapis back in the day, looked several hundred years ago, it was the same price as gold. You know, the, the neat thing about art and paintings, etc., um, is one they tell a, you're able to tell. I think you said this last week. Somebody it was it was really nice to hear. You tell a story. I think it was you, Ian. You tell a story without words. You know, there's a beauty in that. And when you look at some of the masters, you see the beautiful flowing robes of gorgeous, gorgeous blue. Um, that's because the church or the state or a, a very wealthy patron was able to afford that and use that in the paintings. Um, and now you can get you can get just as vibrant with the ultramarines, uh, just but they're synthetic, right? That's a, that's the only difference. Just on the subject of new blues. I forget what the name of it is, but there's that really expensive blue that's come out in recent years. That the Yinman, oh, is it Yinman? Is it? Yes. Right. Yes, that's exactly right. I think that was Mark. Um, yes. Yeah. It is. It is very expensive, and it's very expensive um, because it hasn't it hasn't really exploded into industry. It has some very unique characteristics. You know, it can take very high heat. 
um, but then you're looking for a marketplace that really wants something and wants to spend the money on a blue that will take high heat. There probably is a market, but um, it's like anything. If, if it becomes very, very popular, like Thalos. Thalos, there's hundreds and, or I think there's actually thousands of tons of halos used in industry. Um, there's just huge amounts of the ultramarine being used in industry. That really drives the price down. So anything which is very, um, very unique or hasn't made it to the in, into everybody or common common usage, um, it has the the ability of being expensive. John, yeah. there is a last question, please, uh, if yes. you would uh, if you wouldn't mind to reply to that. Of it, James, James would like to know uh, what palette is good for nature journaling. Uh, I mean, uh, one of these, uh, the palettes, the Daniel Smith palettes that you have, what would, would be good to start with? So James, I'm not an artist, so mm -hmm. I would look to um, Giovanni, Anna, Johnny, Gabriel, and maybe they can think about that and give you a recommendation next week because they, they're constantly painting and they would have a much better mm -hmm. um, answer for you. Would that be okay? Of course, sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's fair. Nice painting, Ian. Okay, so sorry I was late today. Um, I love the computers when they work, and they most always work. And Angela, I heard you had the same issue I had. Um, yes, it's so terrible. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. So tomorrow we have Faja. I think you'll really, really enjoy her. She's wonderful. She's from Bangladesh. Um, I think you'll really enjoy uh, seeing her. And I think Mark was saying her palette is, I think she, I think she has every color. So her, 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 her palette is, is quite, quite large of what she uses. Thank you so much for being with me on Thursday. Giovanni, Johnny, Gabriel, um, Anna, thank you so much, Angela for taking over during my, my dead time. I appreciate that. It's so great to have you and see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody. See you Bye. tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone.